So taking exams is a very stressful experience for a lot of people. And I've noticed that many students don't actually have very good strategies for studying for these exams or getting ready for these exams. A lot of people kind of just, you know, read through all of their notes. They might do some practice tests. They might, you know, look at old tests, stuff like that. But not a ton of people have a, a really rigorous method that helps them to succeed on all of their finals. And I was very lucky because I had some really amazing teachers at the beginning of high school and my dad being one of them that gave me strategies for how to approach tests mentally and then also how to study for them, how to prepare so that you are ready to just crush it on test day. And I want to share those strategies with you. They're strategies that have helped me to be pretty successful on every final that I've taken throughout high school and now at Harvard. So without further ado, here are the strategies that I use to be successful on finals. So the first thing that I want to share is the mindset that I found to be really effective for getting ready to study for finals, for actually studying for finals, and then being in the final, taking the final itself. The mindset that I have is to always view it like it's game day. Okay, so think about all of the hard work that you've been putting in all year. You've just been crushing it, you know, you've been doing all your homework, you've been studying for every test, you've been doing everything. Now it's time for all of that hard work to pay off, okay? It's time for you to show off what you've learned, to show off what you can do. It's game day, like it's an opportunity. So it's okay to be nervous, but make sure that you're using that nervous energy to excel, to, to study harder, and, and to be really sharp on test day, as opposed to, you know, holding yourself back and procrastinating from studying. So think about it like it's game day, like it's, it's time for you to show off what you can do. So on to actually studying. What do I actually do when I'm getting ready for finals? Well, the first thing that I do is I go through all of my notes in the order that they appeared in the course, and I try and pick out the key concepts and write them down into a cheat sheet. Now I try and keep the cheat sheet down to just one or two pages of paper front and back, and what this allows me to do is basically write down a summary of the course on just one or two pieces of paper. And then usually this is my main studying tool. This cheat sheet allows me to see everything that I'm gonna need to know in the course. So then with the cheat sheet in hand, what I can do is, is almost pretend like I'm a teacher. So I'll go through the course from start to finish and just explain the summary. I'll go through every concept and explain it from start to end. And I don't have to go super in depth, but if there's a concept that I feel like I can't explain, like there's a, a missing piece or like I don't fully understand it, then I go back to my notes or I go to the lecture notes or I go online until I feel like I could comfortably explain it to somebody else. And what this does is it ensures that you've actually achieved mastery in all the concepts that you're going to be tested on because the most sure way to, to know that you've achieved mastery in something is to be able to explain it to somebody else. So that's why having a cheat sheet is so effective because you can pick out the key concepts and if you're able to explain them all then you know that you have all of the material that you're going to need to kill it on the test. Once I feel like I can explain every concept that's been taught in the course, that's when I start to do practice problems. And the first place that I look for practice problems, obviously, is if the teacher has posted uh, practice exams or if there are exams from previous years available. It's usually really useful to do those because you'll have uh, an idea of what the structure of the exam will actually look like. And usually on these, if I feel really comfortable with a, with a certain type of question, then I'll usually only do it once or twice because it's kind of a waste of energy to do the same type of question with just different numbers. If you know how to solve it, you're not really learning anything. Okay, so I try and do a wide variety of problems and uh, sometimes the best place to, to look for that because, you know, you could redo tests and quizzes from the year. It might not be the greatest though because, again, you're not really getting that variety of problems and developing a toolkit. So uh, there's a resource that I'll mention at the end of this video and there's a bunch of online resources where you can usually find applicable problems that I think is a very, very effective way for, for building a problem-solving toolkit which will help you on an exam when new problems show up. Thank you. 
So if you're at this point, then you've, you've mastered all of the concepts in the course. You've gone through a sufficient amount of practice problems to feel comfortable with whatever they're going to throw at you. You have no reason to worry. It's game day now, and you get to you get to show off the hard work that you've been putting in, and you get to just kill it, okay? You just get to crush it, and that's really exciting. So just make sure that you take care of the little things. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So get a good night's sleep the night before, okay? Eat right so you've got lots of energy. For me, I like to drink coffee or green tea just so I've got a little bit more energy, you know, so I'm sharp. And also exercise a little bit, okay? Just right body, right mind if you've seen my other videos. Like, it's a, it's a really important concept. So just make sure that you're taking care of yourself in the hours and the days leading up to the exam because your physical and your mental well-being, first of all, is more important than any grade ever. But also, if you're not physically or mentally well, then it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you to do well in your exams. So take care of yourself, all right? So if you're like me, you need to do problems in order to understand concepts, especially when studying for finals, tests, or even quizzes. And sure, you could redo the, the homework problems that you've been doing all year, maybe change the numbers a little bit, but does that really help you to get better at solving problems and, and building a toolkit so that you can succeed in new and different scenarios? So for me, one of the best resources for finding problems, new and interesting ones, has been the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. So I've been on Brilliant since 2013, and it's been a really cool resource because it has a bunch of, of interesting math and science problems and courses that have helped me over the years to both reinforce the concepts that I'm learning in class and therefore help me on tests and exams, but also just it's helped me to build a problem-solving toolkit and to get better at solving problems. And I think that that's one of the most important skills that you can learn. It's totally free to sign up. And if you're one of the first 200 people that uses the link in my description to sign up and you decide to upgrade, you'll get 20% off their premium annual plan. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that if you're a student, you got some, uh, some test-taking tips out of it. Hopefully, it'll help you if you have final exams coming up soon or, you know, in any tests that you have really in the upcoming year, future years, whatever. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you got some value out of it, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.